really just sad. We had a um, we had a town hall meeting um, several weeks ago, and we did talk to the people who uh, landlords that own a number of property, probably over three or four hundred uh, properties. And I think uh, one thing that came out of that meeting is they were super uh, glad that we did have this conversation. They know what's expected of them, and um, most of the people that I've talked with have said they feel like uh, what we're asking of them is, is good. Um, what we do need, uh, uh, because Bobby Ellington is um, retiring at the end of this year, and our other code enforcement officer, some of you may be aware, um, had a bad fall and broke his back in about four different places. So um, we are looking at hiring two more people. Um, the, the thing, we, we've probably torn down uh, probably 70 dilapidated buildings there. So we are actively pursuing cleaning up. The other thing about East Thomaston is the huge site that is the, um, that, that is the old Martha Mill site. I wish that we could get a hold of it. It's a complicated matter. Um, you know, had we been able to get it, get, in, uh, get that site secured, we probably would have put the judicial center there, and that would have helped. But you know, we hope that those efforts continue. We hope that we'll be able to um, clean that site up, and we hope that it will uh, that our efforts will be able to um, get that rehabilitated. But I will say, we're hiring uh, more code enforcement officers we hope to get. Uh, we think that requirements we have for uh, landlords are good. They know what's expected of them. And one thing that came out of their meeting was that we were on the same page. So I think those efforts are ongoing. Any other questions?
come together with the city hall, uh, city council members, um, discuss their problems, let us hear what your concerns are, write them down, let us validate them, um, and then also that's where your strict code cool enforcement shall come in. Um, they have to be enforced, not just for one person, but everybody needs to be enforced, uh, whether you're on the east side or the west side. And I believe that once they start enforcing the code enforcement and the residents are seeing, hey, the fines are getting stiffer, you get one strike, two strikes, three strikes, um, possibly eviction, because we want to keep Tungsten beautiful, all areas of Tungsten. We need to have stricter code enforcers, enforcement, um, not saying anything against the current person or department that's doing that, but in order to do that, it takes a unified team. It's going to take the city council, it's going to take the residents, it's going to take the code enforcement as a whole to sit down because I hear your concerns. I've been out here in the streets knocking on doors and talking to people and that's exactly both of you what you said are some of the concerns that I've heard. Um, I may not have the answer to everything right now but I assure you that I still do research even though I'm not the mayor of the team but Thomaston is my home and I want to see Thomaston beautified and kept beautiful. So I am already working on that, whether or not I become mayor pro tem or not. I will still serve, I will still help. So you can um, look out for me for that. And as far as committees, it needs to have some of the residents on that committee, not just the people. And Ms. Lindsay? Um, I agree with Ms. King. I think that the code to manage or to manage the issues because I've heard so many issues from people about code enforcement and about um, the different areas like you were talking the east side and the west side um, and about even evictions and I've had people say that they were wrongly evicted I believe that there should be some commission or some committee that can work to investigate these issues on both sides and to see um, if there is a solution, if there is a problem, if there is a solution, and then work toward that solution. Mr. Hill. Now, I think, again, we, we've had uh, town hall meetings. We had one specifically with, with landlords. And I think if you look at, um, you know, and Jane, one thing I can say is I appreciate you coming to the meetings. I think, you, you know, it's good that you're there, and I know that you know that Silvertown area. The east side is definitely more um, rental properties. I don't think that we really have the issue in um, Silvertown with people who are who live in their house, their their own their house. The issue is more with the um, with the landlord situation where they own rental property. But the best thing that we did, I don't think we need a committee or a commission. I think what we need to do and is to continue to have town hall meetings. They walked out of there thinking, thought, thinking that that was great. They understand, and they're speaking directly with the city council. I think what we just need to do is keep having um, city council meetings. You know, we had that one. We had another one about the alcohol ordinances to help people understand this is what it's going to be like. And so I think, um, I think basically those town hall meetings are adequate. And I know that we're going to go back and get some other answers and uh, concerns that landlords have. You know, sometimes there are ordinances that have to, that have to be, and then some some of them are state oriented and health related. Well, we're not going to back off of those. But once the, where we have some um, some leeway in working with them, what we want is a, is an area that's beautiful and well taken care of. One of the issues again is the manpower that we have right now and we're hiring two new um, code enforcement officers and so you know I think the town hall meetings and the new hires of code enforcement are going to help us move forward and make it look better. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? If not we'll move forward with the questions. We don't have too many more to get. Ms. Sharon King will start with you on this one. Currently, there are no term limits for Mayor Pro Tem. Do you believe in term limits 
explain why or why not? Yes, I do um, believe in term limits. As with any other professional office, you usually serve one to two term, two, two consecutive terms. The reason that I feel that is necessary is because sometimes over time when people are in office, and no offense to my friend Doug, but when you're in um, office for a number of years consecutively, that sort of tends to lead to complacency and stagnation. Thomason is growing under our current leadership, um, but in order for that to continue, um, if you're in office for 20 years, you've seen a lot of changes, you may have um, and, uh, enhanced some of the changes or helped with the changes, but when you get people out of office after two terms, it allows for newer visions to come in, um, maybe younger people, um, it depends. But I definitely think that it needs to have a limit on it so that new citizens that are coming into Thomason will have a chance to hold those positions. Um, but my biggest reason for that is to prevent stagnation and complacency because once you get in an office, you sort of settle down, you know the politics, you know everybody that's there, and you sort of have this camaraderie where right now there is definitely division um, in Thomason in some areas and on certain situations. We need people of all ethnic races. We also need people that um, vary in age with new visions, um, new ideas that may have come from the outside coming into Thomason to bring new life, uh, more robust ideas to Thomason. Same question, Ms. Lindsay. Uh, I believe that all elected offices should have a term limits. Uh, I believe that anyone group of people that serve together for a long time, things become stagnant. No new ideas come into the group. Uh, just like if the president, the president of the United States can only run two terms, being the highest elected office of the U.S., then all other offices should have term limits. And your response, Mr. Hill? No, I don't believe there should be time. Let me, let me just say, you've got the ability to vote. Why would I want to take that out of people's hands? And for anyone to look and say there's complacency and stagnation. Two weeks ago, in the Epson Beacon, uh, we had ads, most all of us had ads. I would simply ask you to go look at the accomplishments that have been over just the last five years. When we talk about the master plan that's out there and the rural designation, there, there is, to say that there's stagnation is simply not being aware of what's going on in this community. There is tons going on, more going on in the last five than in the prior ten. So um, you've got the ability. I would not take it away, take away from the people the ability to vote who they want in. Um, we, we've got the ability to uh, to uh, have term limits. All you've got to do is vote, and you can decide who comes in. But yet, if you have someone that, that I feel is accomplishing your purposes, why not let the people have that? And you know, and the people ultimately say if they're satisfied or they're not. Don't take that out of people's hands. Let them vote and say, this is who we want to go. Next question will begin with Ms. Lori Lindsay. What plans do you have for additional housing? Um, I saw a, a, a post on Facebook just yesterday, I believe, and I was really surprised to see how many people were looking for rental housing in Thomaston. Um, so I, I added a post and I asked the people just to say, you know, what could they expect um, what rent did they expect or could they pay? And just to get an idea of who was looking. And, you know, there were all different kinds of answers, $500 to $1,000 a month. Uh, the average was around $800. Um, I believe this proves that we do need additional housing. And hopefully, if we bring new businesses, we certainly will need more housing. I know in most cities, their apartment complex is being built, and this is probably the route we should take. A nice apartment complex with amenities would be very nice addition to Thomaston. I know that we have a lot of folks living in poverty now, but I don't think we should add more lower income Section 8 housing. I think 
we should work more toward improving the people's income levels, bringing in new jobs and lowering our poverty rate. Increasing the Section 8 or low-income housing will only enable our population to remain in poverty instead of giving them the incentive to do better. Same question, Mr. Head. Yeah, um, I think there is a need for housing. I think as far as Section 8 and lower-income housing, I think we, we have what we need. What I think is um, what we really need is uh, we have a low inventory of housing, but the government is not the people go build that. We want to, I want, uh, when there is a need, there's a low inventory uh, of houses here. And I think, um, you know, but that's a private issue. That is where private companies need to look here. Where I think the great need we have here is for young people in that 25 to 40 uh, year group. And I, you know, I want them to, and I believe in five years we're going to look back and say that that group of people seen this as a place to come and live and work and play. But they need a place to uh, live. And what I do think there is a need for that starter group and that 150 to 200,000 uh, type thing. But the government's not the one to build that. You've got to have private industry and, and builders that, uh, that go and do that. Now we can rezone the areas and I think there's plenty of um, R2 right now multifamily. Uh, what I'd love to see is downtown some of these businesses and part of what can be done with the rural designation and state tax incentives and to, is to incent people to convert some of that uh, upper stories into, into loft apartments and things like that. What's tough is when a young person wants to come back in that 25 to 30 year age group, they come back, there's very little, so where do they end up staying? They end up living with parents 